Hey, hey, everypone, this is Digibrony, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 63. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. Hey, Daniel, how are you? I've been okay, just another slow day. Really? How slow? Like the Malaysian internet? <laughs> oh, yes. I think, okay, Malaysian internet, nothing can beat that. Uh, I'm sure some other internet company could. So anyway, this week we have a guest host, and our guest host is Alpha Brony from Brony Time. Hey guys, how's it going? Fine, thank you. How are you? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm awake, I'm alive, and I'm still in my pajamas, so it's all good. In your PJs? Well, technically I am in hey, my PJs party. too. Yeah, pajama party. <laughs> yeah. Pajama <laughs> Um, Breakfast yet? Yeah, sure. Why not? Is okay. popcorn breakfast from last night? That's what I had. Uh, I've done that before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had cold pizza, so I guess that works. <laughs> and our guest for this week is DG Brony. Hey, hey, everypony. Hey, DG, how are you? Um, to, For the record, it's morning, right? For you? Yes, it is uh, 11 a.m. for me. Okay. In your PJs? Um. Well, I'm always in my PJs, <laughs> so... Uh, doesn't mean much. I'm actually in shorts though right now, so I don't think that counts. But my my shorts have the the fabric of PJs, so uh, let's just count it. And we have a pajama party! Yay! Yeah, yeah. everyone go get your pajamas. We'll come back reconvene in five. Okay. I'm already in my pajamas because I'm jumping into bed right after this. <laughs> oh boys! Anyway, so um, DG, before we start with the show, we have to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is: Who is your favorite character? My favorite character is Applejack. Wow. Yay. That, that's a rare Very one. Very fast answer. Um, why Applejack? Because yes. um, I've given a lot of thought to it. So, like, um... So yeah, it's very uh, it's it's not hard for me to select favorites because uh, it's the kind of thing I obsess over is favorites in pretty much anything. If you were to ask me like, what's your favorite band? What's your favorite this or that? I could always give you an answer pretty quickly. Well, what is your favorite band? It's a Japanese band called Shinsei Kamate Chan. Huh? I can't <laughs> argue that. <laughs> I haven't heard of that one before. What's your favorite TV show? <laughs> Uh, does it have to be cartoon or U.S. like a like a drama just your, or? Just what's your favorite? I mean, my TV favorite show. TV show is My Little Pony. So <laughs> obviously, like, obviously. Oh, do as, tell as us a bit asked, more about that. <laughs> okay. As soon okay. as I asked the question, I realized the error of my ways. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why I was asking for specifics because I was like, if you're asking generally, it's going to be MLP. But if if you wanted like a non-cartoon or something, okay. What's your favorite non-anime? Non-cartoon? It's hard to say because I actually don't watch almost any non-cartoons. So uh, it's just like I watch like, whatever randomly is on TV. We've gotten off topic already, but I hope that's not No, a we're asking questions. <laughs> These are the first five questions or ten questions. <laughs> uh, let, let's just say it's Game of Thrones. Everybody loves Game of Thrones, right? Or Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. Well, I haven't watched uh, Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad, so... Oh, yeah, they're, they're fine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm not the only one on the call that does not keep up with pop culture. Okay, so... Uh, I mean, I just don't really... I don't really watch live-action shows at all, so I don't keep... Like, there's there's shows that I've watched in the past, and there's shows that I've... Like, I watch when it's on, you know? But I don't really keep up with anything. Um, okay. Like, I'm trying to think. I always think of, like, Gordon Ramsay shows, because I'll watch those anytime they're on, because I love that guy. <laughs> True. So anyway, moving <laughs> moving on, what's your favorite episode? My favorite episode is Apple Bug Season. Apple Bug which Season. Which is, of course, the, it's episode four of season one, which is the one where Applejack uh, doesn't sleep for about a week and just causes mayhem for everyone. <laughs> any reason, sounds familiar. Any reason why? Yeah, because it's just, it's full of, like, really dry comedy that I find absolutely hilarious. There's just, like, it's almost constant jokes and humor, um, but a lot of it's just really subtle and, like, thrown in there. Like, Twilight will be walking up to Applejack, like, about to confront her about something, and you just see, like, an image of Applejack, like, trying to kick a tree and missing and, like, trying to reorient herself. But it's just, like, it's like that constantly through the whole episode. There's always some weird little funny thing happening um, during the whole plot line. So so basically it's all subtle humor then? Right. It's lots of really subtle, like, Relatable weird. humor. Yeah, very dry. You know, just, like, random. That's not 
about a word? ...happening, and, and all of it's pretty relevant because of the fact that Applejack hasn't slept in all this time, so it's like everything she's doing is a result of what's actually happening in the plot, and so it just keeps strengthening the idea that she hasn't slept in all this time because she's doing all this dumb stuff. Okay, okay, so moving There's on... There's going to be a lot of sweetie bill in this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, That's not a word. My life. <laughs> so anyway, That's moving. Not a word. <laughs> I'm just gonna yell in after every time. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh wait, have I been swearing? On yep. Accident? <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! I totally I forgot, forgot to say not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. This is why Norman's motto is "We'll fix it in post." Yeah. Yeah. We did that last week. We have a free radio and a hundred other radio stations in the world. <laughs> ah, boys. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I'm moving on to the next question. How did you become a fan of the show? Well, this you can get a... Like, because the story is kind of long and I've done a video about it anyway. Which I've actually done a video about all of these questions. But oh, if my. you're, you know, if you're on the radio, I guess you might not have... Uh, seen them all so the story of how i became a fan was basically that my little brother who is 15 maybe 14 at the time not sure um it was last february actually no 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 no. i saw the first episode before that because it started to become a thing on the internet um i didn't see it around that much because i don't really go on any like meme websites or any place that i would really see it i just heard it from like my cousins and stuff who were watching the show and they were like oh, man, this new My Little Pony is really great. And, like, a couple of people on Twitter were talking about it. And I was just like, I, I was inclined to believe them. Like, I had no reason to doubt that the show was probably good if so many people were into it. You know, it was usually people whose opinion I generally trust. So I was like, okay, I guess the new My Little Pony is pretty good, you know. Uh, and then the first video I ever saw, and you're going to have to break out Sweetie Belle for this one because the name of the video is actually... That's not a word. That's not a word. Stack. <laughs> and, uh... It's a song by Reggie Watts, and it, someone made a video where it's like Fluttershy and uh, Pinkie Pie singing the song, and it's it's the most perfect like editing and lip syncing in a video that I've ever seen. But uh, a friend showed me that, and I had no idea what it was. I was just like, "This is fantastic." And he's like, "Yeah, it's from the new My Little Pony show. It's pretty good." Uh, he he'd actually seen it on TV on the Hub because mm. he actually watches TV. <laughs> so uh, so I was Does like, he "Watch Breaking Bad." <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't know if he watches, I don't think he watches Breaking Bad. He mostly watches weird- That's not a word! Just at random times. Like, he'll watch the Disney Channel and- That's not a word! Just because. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, that guy had told me about the show and said it was pretty good. So one day, um, I was, cause I, I was getting curious about it. So one day I was really bored and I was in my little brother's room and I just get on his computer and I put on the first episode cause at the time the whole show was easily findable on, in 1080p on YouTube. So that's been, <laughs> which is fantastic. So I, you know, I put on the first episode and he's the whole time. He's just, Oh my God, what is this? Why are we watching this? Why are we watching this? <laughs> what the, what the heck is this? You know? And I'm just sitting there like laughing at him and watching it. But it didn't really catch my attention, the first episode. Like, I, I thought it was, you know, it looked nice and everything, but, like, the storyline did not really grab me or anything. Uh, and I did not end up watching episode two until, like, a little while later. And then even after I did, like, I believe I watched episodes two and three on my own and, uh, like, over the course of a few weeks. And I just didn't really care that much because episode three is kind of boring. Um... But then my little brother, he was hanging out on the website Funny Junk, and Funny Junk had an ever-increasing amount of pony memes showing up on it, and so he was starting to become, like, really familiar with all these pony memes, and uh, his other friends were on Funny Junk, too, so he was talking to them about it, and they were just, like, starting to feel like they really wanted to see the show just to understand all these memes that kept popping up. And his friend started watching it and watched about four episodes, and he had said that he, he really enjoyed it, especially after episode four. Then my brother came to me, and he's like, I'm thinking about watching it, because my friend said it, you know, it's pretty good after four episodes. And I was like, oh, well, I definitely am interested, because I also want to know if it's, you know, like, what's the show like? So let's sit down and watch it. And so we did, and as, you know, episode four is my favorite episode now, but even at the time, I was like, this is really good. You know, I really enjoyed that. Um... Episodes five and six, not so good, but then seven is dragon shy, and it's like, then it picked up again, and from there on out, it was pretty level uh, in how uh, how it was pretty good. And then 
once it was like, because when I finished season one, I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. You know, I get why people are into that or whatever. But then it was after watching season two, you know, like within the first two episodes, it was just like, oh, this is a whole different thing. Like, this is the next level, you know, <laughs> like, this is so much better. And now it's really picking up. And that's when I got like really into it was after watching season two. Oh, I guess everybody kind of loved it the start of season two because, right. well, you got John Delancey, so nothing yeah. can go wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, mind, I've never actually, you know, watched Star Trek The Next Generation, so it's not, like, I, I had heard of Q, and I knew of the character, but, you know, I didn't really make that connection when I watched it. It was just, for me, it was mostly the sense of just being um, more epic and cinematic, you know, in the season two opener, where it's like, some some big stuff goes down, you know, the characters have, like, these really dark moments, uh, the villain actually felt somewhat threatening, you know, and the whole world gets turned into like a that's not a word acid trip, and I love that. I, I keep saying I can't stop swearing. I'm sorry. It's, it's too okay. early for me to be censoring myself. I, I, I was uh, I was prepared for this, but um, just pretend you know, you're talking to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, even these days, I've been having an easier time even cussing in front of my parents, which was like the hardest thing for me to do for a long time. But oh, like. Boy. Because I'm ordinarily, if I'm trying, I'm usually pretty good at censoring myself. But even these, like, because my, my little brother, who's 19, no, 20 right now, he started cussing in front of my parents, like, liberally. So, yeah, it's gotten easier, I guess. But, um, I can anyway, that's not important. My parents. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, like, it's cool. Well, you have to understand, my parents swear constantly, so, like. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Uh, they're they're, they're, they're much worse. Because, huh. like. Like, growing up, me and my brother, like, purposely censored ourselves, and my parents never exactly told us to, we just kind of did, and, like, my brother was like, I'm not going to swear until I'm 18, <laughs> but we would use all kinds of, we would use all kinds of substitute words, so it was basically like we were swearing all the time, just using words that were, you know, Kid more age-appropriate, I guess. Okay. Talking about family and stuff, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? The thing is, I'm really in your face about stuff, so when I got into the show, it wasn't like I was going to keep it a secret or anything, because um, I've been an anime fan for a very long time, and I've got lots of anime crap in my room, right? And it's like, if you have anime figures and posters, it's usually a bunch of like really scantily clad, young-looking girls, so... There was a point where I once had my room like completely covered in posters of like just girls in swimsuits because those posters were really easy to come by. So I had like all these swimsuit posters all over my wall, and people would like my parents would come in and they'd be like, "You're basically living in a room of entirely of pornography." Um, I remember someone, my my uncle walked in once and he said, "This is new age porn," and I was like, "I guess." Um, I actually took all those posters down because most of them weren't very good. I had just had them up because I wanted to have, like, this otaku room thing going on where I would have, like, as many posters as possible. Okay. Uh, but they weren't, like, great posters, so I took most of them down. And because it, even I could appreciate how, like, creepy it was to walk into my room and see that, so... Uh, the only Especially remaining you're a girl. <laughs> Well, there haven't really been into my, any girls in my room in a long time, so... Or ever, so... Um, Unless it was briefly. So, <laughs> yeah, like, th there was all these, you know, scantily clad posters and stuff, so my parents were already used to me being into weird... That's not a word! Especially cartoon-related weird... That's not a word! So, um, when My Little Pony came along, it was just kind of like... Like, me and my little brother, who was 15 again, we got into it at the same time, so both of us were sort of like... You know, uh, after we watched the show, I went and did, like, a ton of research on it and got more into it that way. And he went and, uh, you know, he, he continued to be on Funny Junk, so he knew all these pony memes still. And so that's how he continued to have, like, an involvement in the show. And both of us started following Equestria Daily and stuff. So we quickly got into it. Well, the thing is, I have an aunt who's, like, a lifetime My Little Pony fan. Like, she's been into it ah. since the 80s. Um, oh, my. And so when she found it, because her daughters were the first people I had heard about the new show from, because they post about it on Facebook. They're uh, they're both fans. So my aunt came up to visit us during, like, in February when we had just gotten into it. And she brought me, like, a bunch of pony stuff. She brought me, like, uh, like a, I think a brushable Applejack and some other toys. And she got me that the Brony t-shirt, the one that, you know, says Brony. It's got the Rainbow Dash on it. Um yeah, the, the so she one. brought she brought me and my brother like a bunch of pony stuff. So like the early part of our pony collections were sort of uh, created by our aunt, and so 
you know, for my parents, again, they're so used to us because it, it's not just me that's into anime. My little brothers are into anime, too. So, like, that's been a huge thing in our household, even though my parents have no interest whatsoever in cartoons. Like, they just can't. They can't get into them. Even though they have no interest in watching My Little Pony, me and my brothers got so into it that it was like, th- there was no way to resist, you know? <laughs> but uh, they've always let us get into whatever anyway, so, you know, they really did not have an opinion about it. Of course, now my dad's quite happy that I got into this show because that's pretty much what I've launched my current job out of. Do tell. It's called Digibrony, and it's on YouTube. Um... <laughs> And that's the reason why you're here. Awesomeness. And what about your friends? Well, I made most of my friends watch MLP after I got into it. Obviously, one of my friends had already seen it. He had seen it on TV. Um, He didn't, because most of my friends didn't get nearly as into it, but they they did enjoy it. Um, The first guy had seen it on TV. His whole attitude was like, I already knew about it. You guys are just, like, late. Like, I was already watching it on TV. And I was like, whatever, dude. You're not even that into it. So I don't know why you're, like, acting like that. Then um, one of my best friends, I got to watch it. And uh, he got... He he really enjoyed it and he got into it. But the thing is, he's really slow about watching shows these days. So even though he would consider himself a fan of the show, he still hasn't gotten around to season three yet. Or at least most of it. I have two brothers, the 15-year-old and the 20-year-old, and the 20-year-old is super into it as well. Um, he finally caught up on season three recently. Uh, he's a big Rarity fan. Was he the um, one in your videos? Yeah, the one who was in the Q&A videos. Oh, That's okay. my 20-year-old brother. So the two of them, so my brothers are both into it. Uh, our friends are, let's just say they're aware of it. I wouldn't say, like, my best friend, like, the one who hasn't watched season three yet, is the most into it of anyone that, uh, that I know it uh, offline, but... The others have all seen bits and pieces, just mostly don't care that much. Okay, cool. Uh, well, we we have those kind of friends too that, well, if we hype something up and they don't really care, so, so be it. So let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. And recently, one of our Twitter followers, Rain Holder, brought up a poll that GSC Cinema asked. And the question was, Tell us which of the following content you want to see playing in GSC cinemas. And My Little Pony, Equestria Girls was on the list. Within a few hours, Equestria Girl got the most votes. If you want to vote, you can do so in the link below. And I just checked the link. It got 104 votes. Yeah. Yeah. You beat up one piece, wow. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. It says uh, 93. Nah, nah. You're looking at the side. You should look at in the middle. What do you like, mean look at the middle? Like like hover your mouse on the bar. Yeah, I'm saying 104. Why is this nonsense here? It's just to tell people. Yeah, it's just 104. And it beat out okay, one right. piece. It beat, it beat out Iron Man 4, which is not coming out yet. Uh, Welcome to Malaysia. But, but um, seriously, if they honor their agreement or something, we might see... My Little Pony Equestria Girls on local cinema. I highly doubt it. <laughs> I mean, why are people voting for Fast and Furious 6? It's not a, like if this vote loses, FNF 6 is not going to play. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just one of the default um, questions. Wait, if they, uh, if it doesn't default, win, I don't recall Fast and Furious. What, what now? Uh, Wait, if, if they don't get a vote, they will not play Fast and Furious down there? I don't. It, don't I, they it's just ask a... you which you want to see. They don't say what we are going to play, so... We just hope they honor the vote. Because that might be a blessing <laughs> if you guys don't have to sit through another, you know, Vin Diesel, I'm going to drive a fast car. <laughs> oh, but it's this, fun. This one has, but this one has Vin Diesel and The Rock. Yeah. I also have Vin Diesel and The Rock. I would, no, I haven't every, watched every movie they're like, Every movie they're like, it's all the characters again. It's like, I know, that's, that's kind of the idea you're supposed to do. Is, <laughs> it's like, they're going to drive cars. It's like, we know. It went from street racing illegal street racing to international espionage. Right. That's really the, the shark that they've jumped. Yeah. I saw that trailer and there was like tanks like in a car chase and I'm like, tanks can't go that fast so I don't know what kind of tank this is but... You know, I, I know I'm, a lot of I'm people... A supercharger. I know a lot of people who love tanks and they could argue with you about it. I mean, if they can modify you know, a Toyota Prius or something to be able to race with a Ferrari, I don't see why they can't mod a tank. I guess I wouldn't. Like I said, I haven't seen any of the Fast and the Furious movies, so I don't really know what the what kind of crazy modifications they get up to. 
Well, watch part one. I think part one is the best. I haven't watched part one. Oh, you should. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Mysterious My Little Pony DVD slash Blu-ray appears on Amazon.com. On Amazon.com, a Mysterious My Little Pony DVD slash Blu-ray has appeared. And the title of this is My Little Pony August. Upon further inspection, the runtime on the disc is 72 minutes. That's the same runtime as the soon-to-be-released in theaters My Little Pony Equestria Girls. Could this mysterious DVD slash Blu-ray be the My Little Pony Equestria Girl movie? Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, what are your opinions? I'll go with Dan first. I think somebody let something slip over here. Really uh, now? Um, Alpha? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And did you? It's just simply yes. Well, well, you think about it. If the movie's going to come out in June, and then right. three months later they're going to do their direct DVD release, at the same time, it's it's Shout Factory, which we know Shout Factory is doing the DVD, and they know they're helping with the movie, so it's a, I say it's a given. Yeah, right. me too, because a 72-minute runtime, that's the same as 120 minutes on... Sorry, that's the same as 1 hour and 20 minutes in the cinema. So, yeah, definitely a DVD... But the thing is that I don't list down here is the Blu-ray has two discs, one a Blu-ray and one DVD. Um, mm. Your thoughts on it behind the scenes and stuff? Um, no, it's probably just because a lot like these days a lot of movies come out with a two-pack, so that if you have a DVD or Blu-ray player, you can use whichever one. You know, oh. um, especially kids' movies often come out like that, where they have the, the Blu-ray and the DVD because of the fact that. You know, you're not sure if your family has uh, one or the other, and it's like, I guess it's probably easier than releasing them separately. That's because they probably yeah, aren't like, counting on the sales of the DVD to do that well these days. But they they want to include it just in case you want to buy this show for your kids. You know, that is just confusing. Yeah, you, get, you get the Blu-ray for home, you get the DVD for the car, and then you get the right. digital download for the iPad. Right. Ah, yes. The DVD for the car, that's definitely part of it. Because, again, like I said, kids' movies almost always do this. So they they want to have it in, like, as many formats of where where do people play movies for their kids, you know? Oh. Definitely. I pads, usually. I mean, that's well, here. Yeah. If not, they usually bring out the little portable DVD players that look like laptops. Yeah. They bring them to restaurants and all over the place here. So that's the reason why for the two discs. Okay, uh, well, I've been out of the whole... Um, buying Blu-ray, this thing, because I live on the internet, <laughs> YOLO. Right. I mean, I, I haven't bought any DVDs or Blu-rays in a long time. I just am overly observant of commercials, especially for kids' movies. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I just noticed that as a trend and sought to explain it. But yeah, okay. I believe that's what's happening there. And mm-hmm. I hope it is, because I'd like to see Equestria Girls, and there's no, it's not showing anywhere near me, so... Yeah, well, if it's true, same here goes for me because if it's not coming in local theaters, um, I'm we'll gonna put have put it in our local theater. I mean, not to say commercially, but yeah, it won't. We'll Pro- make our own theater. <laughs> yeah, that's why we need a disc. So anyway, let's move on to the next news topic. And then, why don't you take this one? All right, so let's move on down there. More info on My Little Pony Equestria Girls, and now a trailer. In a recent article by the New York Times, additional information regarding Equestria Girls was given, not leaked, given. The movie itself will receive the red carpet treatment when it premieres as a full-length animated feature at the Los Angeles Film Festival in June. And according to John A. Frascotti, the Hasbro Chief Marketing Officer, <clears throat> we are responding to the desire by our fans to experience the brand in more ways. They imagine themselves as which pony they would be or which pony they would identify with the most. And Hasbro's answer to this was to create Equestria Girls, a parallel world in which the My Little Pony characters were reconceived as teenage girls in high school. And a quote from Megan McCarthy about this, the head writer for the movie, our goal is to stay true to who these characters are. It's new, but still an extension of our mythology. You can find links in the show notes. So, Norman, um, I know you're very excited about Equestria Girls, so what do you think of the trailer? Um, I'm kind of neutral to it. Like, I see potential in it. But no, nah, the, the thing is, the line here, they imagine themselves as ponies they would be, or which pony they identify with the most, and the answer is to create Equestria Girls. Yeah. I mean, that that's obviously just like producer speak. That's just 
or uh, executive speak, rather, where it's like, that, that phrase means absolutely nothing. It's just their way of justifying creating it, you know? True. It's like, yeah. I mean, if they ask me, go ahead. It's the way they can say it instead of like, well, we just wanted to steal money from Monster High, so we decided to do this. That's 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 the short version of that. Like, what they really mean is, we we thought it would be a good idea to make a human version, because maybe, you know, like, that'll do something. So, like, okay. you know... I like the way it's just like because <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, it makes if you even if they explained it like that, it does make sense. It makes sense to look at a, a, a pony franchise and go, you know, if we humanize them, maybe that would be a thing, and then like give it a shot, you know. But uh, true, no. but, you know, they have to use some kind of executive speak so that it sounds like they have like a like a legit like interesting reason to do it, other than just we thought it would sound like a good idea. <laughs> it's true, I mean, they we want to get your money. That's true. Just, no, but honestly yeah. speaking, from a business standpoint, if you look at what Hasbro don't have now, they don't have dolls for girls, um, right. i.e. Barbie, i.e. Monster High. Monster High. So, like, right now they don't really have anything for the exception of Little's Pet Shop, and that's just only one character. That's Brie. Right. But that is kind of, uh, let's just say it's not marketable. So, yeah. they want something that can sell, and the best option is to create ponies, equestria girls, and... Yeah, yeah. it's funny, because, you know, I, I used to um, I used to work at Target, and I pretty much stocked these aisles, and I've seen these toys, and I, I do agree with the, uh, with the fact that it does seem like it's basically Monster High, um, more so than Bratz, because Monster High is, was, it was pretty big. That That's not a word! It would fly off the shelves when I was working there, like, uh... A lot, so, and the My Little Pony section was interesting because it's it was sort of separate from uh from all those sections. Like there was usually a bunch of aisles where there's like mostly dolls and popular shows uh, on Disney and stuff, and then My Little Pony was a little bit more edged towards the younger side of the aisles where it's like close to the to the toddler toys and stuff like that. So I definitely think it could be that they're trying to branch off into those other shelving uh, sections where the mm. older toys are. Okay, understandable because from where I'm at. When I go shopping or stuff, well, usually the pony hunt, I do notice that it's kind of way back near yeah. the toddler section. That's true. Well, it's, uh, I think that it's like uh, talking about the ideas like, yeah, they want to make money and I can't fault that. It's it's what they do. They're made to sell toys. And right. I can understand wanting to take a well-known franchise that there's a great connection to and like build off of that instead of trying to come up with a whole new IP, which is going to cost a lot more money and may or may not, you know, take around the way that taking right. these known characters would. From so, what I've read is that this is something to do to commemorate the 30th anniversary of My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this it's is just something that timing. I've read somewhere. You know, you, like, that's just, that's called it happens to coincide with the 30th anniversary of yeah. My Little Pony, so they said <laughs> yeah, it's because of that. Like, you, you, you again, know. It's, it's totally executive speak. Because yeah. like any time that an anniversary is coming up and they had plans anyway, they always... Like, for any franchise, it always ends up get, being tied in, regardless of whether it really, really has to do with it at all, you know? True. You have a point there, because this happened last year with Care Bears. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, then, then um, my yeah. rule is, if you don't have anything to back it up, it's just rumors and speculation. It's a rumor, but of course, as I said, I read it somewhere. I don't yeah. have a rumor, to, I'm not, sorry, I don't expect to back it up. Yeah. But I'm no. saying it does coincide, so basically, yeah. perhaps True. another, no, path, but, maybe G5. Uh, no, the, the thing is, uh, if they say it's coincide with the 30th anniversary, you know what they should really do? You, you know what? what? Like, call back Lauren Faust, call back the original creator of My Pretty oh, exactly. Pony, and, like, make them work together to create a show. Like, yeah, that that would be awesome. And let I them use think, Firefly again. Faust wants to come back, because I think she, she's got other stuff she's working on. Yeah, yeah. If, well, you know. And Hasbro kind of burned that bridge, too. Yeah. Well, there is the cash aspect. If you pay her enough, she might come back. I don't know, because uh, she's yeah, she's doing a project with her husband right now, and I believe they've been like dedicating a lot of time and energy to that. So she probably does will not be going to work with anything pony for a long time. Okay. Yeah. If and the closest she'll go is probably fighting his magic that yank. Right. Mm, it's true. True. Which all she really did for that is just design the characters. So you yeah, know, I'm sure that. Um, for someone who designs characters all day, it was not the hardest or most complicated thing in the world to do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, but okay, uh, moving back on to the trailers. Who here have seen it? 
I have. I have. Um, I've seen it at least, like, 40 times now. <laughs> okay. I framed, I framed it. I had to be honest. I had, I had seen it about 10 times as well. Yeah, I've seen it a few times, and, well, it is pretty awesome. Well, for the trailer. Here's the thing I'll say, like, I am so glad it looks a lot better than any sort of promotional stuff they've been putting oh. in. It's I not that weird half that, Android right, thing. Yeah. They Hello, don't have yeah. fucking tattoos on their faces. I can't yes. stop swearing. You're yes. going to have to edit this all day. I'm sorry. It's but yeah, the lack of tattoos on their faces is um, is definitely a plus. Because when I saw the very first ever production designs that they put out, the one where it was like they all looked like exact clones of one another, <laughs> I didn't hate it. I was like, this is pretty okay. But then they put out the one where they looked like brats and they had the tattoos on their faces, and uh, I was like, this has just become a nightmare. <laughs> but I, now that I've seen the actual thing, they're they're adorable. Um, I hear a lot of people complain about their outfits, but I don't have any issue with it. I think they look nice. Yeah. Um, I love the way human vinyl scratch looks, and I could watch like the GIF of her bobbing back and forth all day, and I have. <laughs> you, um, you know, you know one thing. Um, in that scene, they show the CMCs, and well, right. um, Scootaloo was doing the chicken dance, and it's canon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we love you, yeah. Megan McCarthy. But uh, the reason I've seen the trailer so many times is because, as you guys may know, I um, I started running. Um, the analysis tag on Equestria Daily recently, yep, right? Yep. So um, I had put out a video on on my channel where I told everyone, "Hey, I'm now working for Equestria Daily. I'm doing it like I'm doing an analysis section. If you have analysis videos, I'm probably not going to post like everything that people submit me or even close to everything. But submit me everything you come up with anyway, so I can know if it's uh, like so I, I can just check it out. Well. That opened the floodgates for lots of people to send me analysis videos. And, of course, because Equestria Girls is such a – the trailer is such a big deal, <laughs> I got, like, 20 analysis videos of the trailer sent to me. <laughs> so I've had to – like, and, you know, some of them have, like, unique takes, and a lot of the videos are pretty good. But I can't really post any of them on Equestria Daily because they're all pretty much the same, and I couldn't choose one over the others or anything. And Equestria Daily did a roundup, so – True, like true. You know, of the episode, so they pretty much covered everything themselves. So, but I've just had to watch like all these videos, and I'm like, man, I am extremely familiar with this trailer now. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Um, since you're familiar, uh, let's go through it piece by piece. Um, we know that El- Twilight is still an alicorn. We know right. that the mirror exists. Wait, and- wait, 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 wait. How do you know Twilight's an alicorn? I didn't see her wings. Ay, ay, ay. Um, uh, DG, you, you say you watched it ten times, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, would, I didn't pay that much attention to that part mostly, but I believe I've heard that she was an alicorn still. Yeah. Maybe the art, but I don't recall seeing the wings and heart, and I'm very out for that because I don't like her wings. You know, you could have just censored it out of your mind. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing, because this is the first time that we're going to see Twilight since becoming an alicorn, and as she gets sent to the earth world and uh, loses her wings instantly. <laughs> oh, there's a joke. I'm glad. There's I'm a joke glad. somewhere I saw that somebody wished for to a ge- he wished to the genie, uh, I, wa- I wish right, yeah. that Twilight is not an elecon anymore. And they gave us Equestria Girls. Yeah. Um, I'm <laughs> looking right now at it, and uh, she does have wings when she goes into the portal. Yeah. So, uh, okay. wait, the, the thing is, um, a lot of things I heard that people were complaining that was Spike was a dog. Oh, are they going right. to make him stupid and stuff? But I think so, it's funny that everyone complained about that because I don't care about Spike at all. So <laughs> when he's a dog, I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> There's even this little comic that I saw where Spike's on his iPad and he shows Twilight. Don't you think this dog looks familiar? He's showing her Zoe Trent. And Twilight says, one day you're going to get it back and you're going to get it back so hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pixel Kitties. That was a funny comic. No, but um, overall, from the trailer, um, the high school aspect was kind of okay, I think. Well, we didn't see anything uh, plot-wise or anything. You know, it's like here right. in the settings, here's a Twilight boyfriend, uh, and here's a evil Twilight in this world. I don't think know? he's going to be a real love interest. I think he's just kind of going to be there. Yeah, uh, um, I don't. When yeah. you're consciously aware that you've got to step back into a portal to get home, I don't think you're going to want to fall in love. No, I, right. I don't think um, the love aspect in this show is going to be there because. Well, judging by how Megan McCartney works and even the other writers work on the show, um, love, like lovey-dovey stuff, I, I don't think it's um, an issue here. Even if they... I think, sorry, I think the main reason... How far can they go? 
I think the main reason so many people are worried about it is just because they're like, we're going into a cliche high school situation. There's going to be a cliche high school romance. But I really don't think there will be. I think that there will be, like, subtle... It, it'll be like the the kids' version of it, or, the like, the non-existent version of it. Like, where if this was anything else, then it would be a, a lovey-dovey thing. But because it's Equestria Girls, it probably won't be. It'll probably just be like, he's really helpful to her. Um, and she's it's like, awful. oh, thank you so much, you know, but they never really probably will pursue it at all, you know. You, you know what, the, um, that got me thinking, and um, here's, some one, here's one aspect that people don't really touch, is if that guy, was that, if that guy is, I don't know what to call him, let's just call him that guy, um, if Twilight... Call sees- him uh, Francis, Francis Shimmer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um... Let's just say that uh, Francis Shima, like Twilight sees Francis Shima, instead of a love love relation, um, she sees him as a brother, like a big brother, best friend forever kind of deal. Like, oh, yes. you're like my big brother. Like, uh, yes, yeah. like Ben, 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 Francis and Francis kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, I mean, like, why... Not biologically related. <laughs> yeah, but, like, like, honestly speaking, why people don't see that? Like, Twilight... The Twilight's crush on him is not in a love relationship way, but more... Whoa, 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 whoa. Does she have a crush on him? If they do it. If they do it. Okay, okay, I see. All right. I, I, thought, I was thinking, what the hell did I miss in this trailer? Suddenly everybody knows so much. No, it's just theories and stuff, but... <laughs> no, no, I, I, I thought you all were, like, confident about, like, she's going to get fall in love with this kid. No, no, no. That, that's what... going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's what the internet's been bitching about but seriously why don't you look at it like she looks at him like a brother like that's relevant in even twilight's case because if you look you she, look but here's the here's no, no no here's the thing she has a brother yeah but and if they were going to do that they would just have him humanize like every other character it's true but, but then again there is this synopsis that has been written that says that twilight is sent to this world and she's helped by people that remind her of her friends so what I'm thinking is that Twilight's the only one that steps through the mirror. Therefore, she's looking for someone who reminds her of, uh, not Francis, sorry, Shining <laughs> Armor. And, well, well, then she looks finds like a human version of Shining. Because she finds a human version of Pinky, Rainbow Dash, uh, so there should be, there's human versions of everyone, so there should be a human version of uh, Shining Armor. Maybe oh, she's still aligned like, of the family, because if you know, you get transported, and you're like, you do about my brother, and the guys be like, okay, okay, calm down. No, uh, but uh, I'm. You guys know anything about parallel dimension? Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's just say no. So basically, in parallel worlds, in this Equestria Girl world, Twilight Sparkle does not exist. Therefore, um, Shining Armor, Twilight Shimmer, and Twilight's Dead does not exist. Even if they do exist, they did not hook up to get Shining Armor and Twilight. So in that world, Twilight does not exist. So. Shining Armor does not exist too. So, to replace Shining, you'll get Francis Shimmer. Man, I, I, that makes sense. If you're reaching, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but... But, if it, but you don't have to... She still has her dog, Spike. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So, it's... So, who's to say her parents and her brother can't exist, but she doesn't exist in that world? Yeah, true. But no, um, the dog, Spike, um, it's from Equestria. That dog is Spike. Right. He doesn't come with her, does he? Yeah. I'm not um, sure. I'm not very sure. Yeah, Although if you, she keeps carrying Spike around in her no, backpack. Uh, no, the thing is, if you look it's... in the video where Twilight was twirling around into the mirror, in that last frame, you see Spike. Last frame? Dude, did you watch that frame by frame? No, it was pretty obvious. Okay, I need to get my eyes checked. Apparently not. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. Basically, okay, Um, I, I think we bash EQG enough, so are we, are we here all in agreement that we're hyped to watch it? I'm nervous sighted. Nervous. I'm a uh, nervous sighted. I believe the word you're looking for is ambivalent. <laughs> I'm. I don't know. I I. I'm not one of those people like, no, that's horrible. How could they? How dare they? Or anything like that? Or, or you know? But I just want to say I'm disappointed in it. Huh. Uh, or the idea of it. Uh, the idea of like and throwing the characters. I'm cool with that. Doesn't bother me if they want to do a spin off and do that. That's fine. Uh, but the thing that disappoints me is that. It's had such a huge following, it's got such a huge thing, and they decided to make a movie, and they have such a great mythology to pull from, and they decided to do this, and sort of dumb it down. So that's the pony movie that we get, 
is just kind of like, it feels sort of cheapened. I know that's a great team who's working on it, and I understand that, you know, you got the same people working on the show, and they're going to try and go, try to uh, fight against the stereotypes that you see of, like, children and girls programming and stuff. But there's still that point. There's this interesting article talking about it, like how everything has to be sexualized for girls as far as, like, toys and everything like that. And, like, ponies was the last sort of safe haven. I, I'm not I'm not getting a rule 34 or anything like that. I'm just talking about the stuff itself. But now we put them in miniskirts and chasing boys and that whole cheap thing that we that Lauren Faust said – women and girls are better and more important than that and seem like such a backwards slope for it. You know, like... It, uh, I understand, understand. I understand where I you're coming from. I think it'll probably be good and, you know, I, I don't doubt they're, they're writing for it but it's just the whole idea is just disappointing to me. Okay. Well, as for me, yeah. I kind of right. want to watch it and, like... My excitement for it is what happens after that because once you pop an idea into the fandom, like just imagine what stories they could tell, what animation they could do, and just think of the possibilities. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, because there's been a there's been so much great like art and comics to come out of this already that for me it's already completely justified the existence of it. Just in that there's been so much great stuff to come out of it, even now. True. True. Um, and for me, the, the, my, basically my motto when it comes to stuff like this is that I never see more content as a problem um, because it doesn't degrade it, – it doesn't affect the comment that we, content that we already have. You know, this won't um, – some people will be like, eh, they ruined the show. But it's like that's your – that's you letting it. You know, um, you don't, it doesn't have to ruin the show if you don't want it to. The show will be fine. Season four will come out, and it will still be My Little Pony, and there will be no Equestria Girls of mention, and, you know, it's completely up to the individual whether or not they want to let Equestria Girls taint their perception of season four. But um, for me personally, I'm just like, hey, there's a new thing, you know? It's better than having a a not a new thing. So, yeah. (laughs) True. But the thing about um, that is that it's like, he says, like, if you go back to that marketing officer, responding to the desire for fans to experience the brand in more ways. Okay. Yeah, movie. Totally get that, but we want to experience those characters. It's like the comic was like that. Here's a chance to experience it in more ways. But it was more of the characters expanding on that universe. This seems like such a... It's an easy, I mean, cheap buy-in for yeah, Hasbro. Like, obviously, obviously, we would rather have a My Little Pony movie that's a, like actually ponies, but you know, I'm not going to say... I don't think this is worse than nothing, you know, like, it, yeah, that's something. Cause I think a lot of people have that attitude. They think this is worse than if we never had anything. And it's like, well, for me, it's, it's never worse to have something than it is to have nothing, even if that something sucks. Cause at least it, it's, it, it exists and that's something to talk about and look at and form an opinion on. And maybe some people are going to like it. So, you know, it, it's worth existing if some people like it. Yeah, it's I true. think it looks, I'm interested in it. I like the, I like the designs. I like the animation. So, you know... Yeah, uh, I, I, I have to agree. It's true. It's like... Um, like, how many Fast and Furious are there now? Like, six? Six. So, yeah, right. it's like... It's better than nothing. Exactly. Anything's well, better than Fast following, and Furious. <laughs> I've been following the rumor mill about the whole deal of humans and ponies. And as it started off as uh, some art that was released of how probably humans will be introduced into the My Little Pony universe by being humans that play with the ponies. And I was like, no... That's not going to happen. Then came That's the how they... Because the, um, the first... The original My Little Pony had humans in it. Yeah, her yeah, name was Megan. Yeah. And then so, uh, after that came, of course, the Equestria Girls, the first round of the art, and I was bashing that left, right, and center because I disagreed with Twilight having her wings out like that. Uh, really, you, I, Dan, I always hog on it. Dan, um, yeah. you always hog, and I always say, shut up, because nobody cares. Twilight, they want to bash people in the head saying that Twilight is an alicorn, so they be. Yeah, I, I know. And what happened is, after that, I was so, so angry with this um, kind of whole deal about Equestria Girls. If you talk to me about it, I would just explode. But then again, the trailer changed my mind about a lot of things, because... It kind of reminded me how these writers can embrace such an idea. No matter what Hasbro throws at them, they're not going to just give up and say, "You know what? Screw it. Right. Let's just throw something like, out." I've heard. Um, I've heard from like uh, one of the storyboarders on it, where they were just like, "We're we're sad about how this had to happen. Like that it that it's this corporate thing, but we had fun making it. You know, like 
they put their all into making it. They were like, we, do, we don't, like, it's not like we came up with this and we were like, oh, this is going to be such a great idea. But once they had it, they worked with what they had and, you know, made it's it. It's the best of a bad situation. True, 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 true. Yeah, and that's what I really, really love about them. So the whole deal with the trailer, it just totally flipped my entire perception over. And also knowing that as a kind of a movie that's going to be released that is tied into a series like this, no matter what happens, no matter how, how badly they twist the world upside down, they always have to press the reset button in the end. So nobody's right. going to die. Nobody's going to cast some irreversible change that they can't turn back. Well, let's just say this. You gave My Little Pony a chance. Now, why don't you give uh, Equestria Girl a chance? I'm going to give it a chance, and that's not really... Oh, like I said, I, I think the artwork, the technical aspect of it is great. I have a lot of faith in the show. Uh, or the community, but it's just everything that it represents is what's disappointing to me. Yeah. Right. Well, anyway... Basically, I would say I gave My Little Pony a chance. And they, they've they honored it. I gave Hasbro a chance, and that's a different story. Dan, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Alright. Um, I, I know... Let's talk about Twilight Corn. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, God, no. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, let's that be over time. Let's that be over time. Anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have DG Brony, a very popular yeah, YouTuber. Yeah. So, DG, how are you? Are you having fun? Yeah. So, uh, DG, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm DG Brony. I do analysis of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Um, I started doing it about in, you know, well, I mean, I've, I've been analyzing the show since about last February when I started watching it, but I didn't start doing videos until uh, December. And they very quickly took off. Um, I got a, a ridiculous number of subscribers and stuff on YouTube and, um, and attention, and I sort of spawned a culture around it where um, more and more people kept emerging who wanted to also analyze My Little Pony. Um, part of the reason I started it was because when I got into the fandom, I was really shocked by the fact that no one was analyzing My Little Pony, um, at least not in a, in a big public way where everyone knew about it. Um, like, cause I, well, it was funny when I first started, I, I figured that it would have been, cause the show, the fandom was so big. I thought everything's probably been said about this show already. Uh, and then I looked around and I couldn't find anyone saying anything. Like I, I found, you know, little bits and pieces of like analysis here and there where it'd be like theories or people coming up with stuff on Reddit and stuff like that. But nothing that was like a permanent fixture that anyone could go find that was like, you know, big and, and out there. So I was like, wow, I guess I got to be the one to step up to the plate. And so I did. And, and I guess everyone else realized upon watching my videos, hey, wow, no one was really doing this, were they? So now everyone wants to do it. And then I started talking to Sethisto of Equestria Daily about it because he was, he was interested in the fact that, it was, that this was sort of emerging as a thing, but he didn't really know what to do about it. He couldn't tell like, which stuff was good or bad, and like, he couldn't keep up with all of it. So I said, well, I'm keeping up with all of it, so you can go ahead and let me handle it. And he was like, okay. So he added me as a member of Equestria Daily, so now I do that too. Okay. I, uh, I post up the analysis videos there. That's awesome. So, um, how did you get into EQD? Um, did you contact Sophisto or Sophisto contact you? How, how did um, it start? Specifically, what happened was uh, there was a video last month that was made by uh, Brony Curious and Anthony C, who are both uh, analysts as well. Anthony C is um, he only puts out like one video every long stretch of time because he works like really, really hard and has these like uh, he, he's very. Um, similar to like that guy with the glasses sort of videos or um, or Spoonie and stuff like that where he's got like these sort of longer, more um, character-driven videos. And he had done a collaboration with Brony Curious called Reviewing His Magic for a Canterlot Wedding, which was like 22-minute, no, even longer. It was like 30-minute uh, video. Just breaking down a Canterlot Wedding because Anthony C. hated it. <laughs> but they they break it down in such a way where they get into like every possible detail of the episode, talk about absolutely everything. It's brilliant. When you watch it, even if you like the episode, you'll totally enjoy this, uh, this video. And it ends with this big headcanon that Anthony had come up with where, um, it was an idea that maybe Chrysalis was nightmare moon and like, or in like was Luna. And when you hear it, it's, it's brilliant. And people were sharing it around everywhere. Right. So, 
uh, Sophisto posted it up on Equestria Daily because he thought it was it was brilliant, and um, I believe Paleo, who also does reviews of MLP, uh, he's been doing them for like a long time. Uh, he, he does like episodic reviews of the show, like you know, with a score and like just basically giving his opinion and stuff. And he was saying, "Oh, are we gonna like start putting? Re- are we gonna start seeing reviews on Equestria Daily, like in the comments?" And Sadisto said, "Well, I've been thinking about giving Digibrony stuff its own posts because uh, he basically just really likes my videos, right?" And Paleo was sort of offended because he was like, "Well, why would you give the one guy who everyone already knows about more attention when there's other people who are doing this that you're not posting?" So. Uh, um, upon reading, and Paleo, you know, sent that to me, He's, he told me that he had said this and that he was kind of frustrated about it. So I sent an email to Sadisto, and I was like, hey, what if we posted up more analysis and did it in, like, collection posts? Because you know how on Equestria Daily they'll have, like, the music of the day or, um, Draw you know, posts like that so where like. they group a lot of stuff together. Well, what he told me was that the music of the day thing actually doesn't work out that well because... N- because it's so much that no one really listens to it. Uh, He said that he's actually, he much prefers when he can give stuff like an individual spotlight because everyone will actually go check it out. So he was like, if I do this with analysis and I just group it all into these big posts and it's a bunch of videos that that not as many people care about, then it's just going to, you know, stifle it right from the beginning. No one's going to pay attention. So what he'd rather do is have whatever bigger videos come out, get their own feature posts, you know, and and really feature the... uh, the prominent analysis videos, but he was telling me, like, he doesn't really, he can't keep up with it because there's so many people doing it, and he can't tell which stuff's good. So I just said, well, if you give me control, I'll do it for you. And he was pretty immediately, like, wanted to be bring me on board. Um, and he was like, yeah, I'll do that. But he held off for a little while because of the fact that there was, like, a lot of drama involving conventions and stuff that he didn't want to uh, have to involve me in. But as soon as that was over, he, like, immediately invited me to uh, to write for the site. Oh, awesome, awesome. So that goes wow. behind the scene of EQT. <laughs> okay. So, right. um, um, like, all you really need to know about the, the behind the scenes of Equestria Daily is that it's basically exactly like the in front of the scenes of Equestria Daily. <laughs> like, um, whatever, like, the, the, the kind of, like, personality and, and attitude that Sethisto has in his posts is exactly what he's like. So, you know, whatever you see hitting the front page, like, that's practically just what we talk about, bef- like, in you know when when he's talking about like putting up a post, it's like he talks about it in the chat and like whatever he says in there is practically the same thing he writes <laughs> in the post. So like, it's almost one one. Okay, um, so um, taking a question from uh, our viewers or listeners, um, Morpheus he asks, as a brony analyst, how do you deal with your own biased opinion getting mixed with the analysts? Well, the way I see it, everything is super biased. No one is unbiased, and I don't try to be unbiased. Like, that's not my goal at all. Um, my primary goal I, I is disagree. To... Get it, because it's Why? biased. No, it's, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. So anyway, yeah, um, I, see, I see everything as extremely biased. Um, you know, because the way I see it, everything about being the fact the fact that you are you and not me means that we won't see things the same way even if we watch the exact same show and we try to filter out our opinion and say like what exactly was said in this show we we have opinions about whether that's good or bad or whatever like there's no one who can say um like this was well written or something because i might think it was well like um perfect example magical mystery cure uh one of the most controversial opinions I have is that I absolutely adore that episode. I love everything about it. And the most important thing is that even among people who like it, I'm the only one um, out of people who are like outspoken about it. A lot of people have told me they agree with me, but I love the pacing of that episode. I think it's perfect. And so many people tell me that the biggest complaint about Magical Mystery Cure is that nobody likes the pacing. People are constantly yeah. complaining about it. Um, if you watch the Bronies react, then like, the, the aftermath of Bronies React, where they like ask everyone what's your opinion of the episode, everyone says it's rushed. I don't think it's rushed. I think it's perfectly fine the way it is. So, you know, that obviously shows that there is no way to have an unbiased opinion about this ep- uh, about this thing because you know, um, it's not like you can say, oh well, Digi's just biased. He <laughs> just likes it because blah blah. It's like yeah, but that's th- that clearly shows that there is 
there is no unbiased opinion of this thing, you know? It, it's impossible. Everyone's going to have their own idea about it. So true, you true. hear that, Norman? So, <laughs> right. So, uh, <laughs> you know, when, when it comes to doing analysis, the reason I do it is not because I'm trying to find the truth or something. It's because I'm trying to figure out what I think. Like, my goal is always, if I like something, I want to know why. If I don't like something, I want to know why. So I go into it with that kind of attitude where it's like, why do I feel the way I do about this? Why do I like this episode so much? Let's figure it out. It's not really for anyone else. It's really for myself, but it has applicability to, to other people. Like, you know, um, if you watch my video and you agree with what I say, it's not because what I said was correct. It's because it resonates with you, you know? So, um, so yeah, every, everyone has their own opinion and I share mine and some people agree with it and some people disagree and it's fun, you know? So true, that's, true. that's ultimately, um, I kind of uh, I kind of get it because it's like if you like the same thing but you won't see eye to eye on what what what's the reason you like it. Exactly. True. And that's happened plenty of times where where I put out a video and I explain why I like something and other people are like I like it too but that has nothing to do with why mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, it's with me like Final, with Final Fantasy VIII. I kind of like the game but I hate it now because of the story and stuff. So and so, yeah. If Final I need, Fantasy if I, was awesome. What Final Fantasy VIII? You like it? Yeah, absolutely. Why? Uh, now, sorry, my mic now we have uh, a demonstration of uh, Digibrony's theory right in our front of our faces. Yes. No, uh, it's just that. Like, like why I liked it? Yeah. Why? Why do you like it? I like the I like the characters. I like the gameplay. I thought it was. Uh, it looked a lot. I'm not compared to Final Fantasy VII, but I say the graphics look really good for the time for the system. True. Uh, and it was neat because if you like really paid attention, there was like so many different levels to the interactions. Ooh, uh, yeah. Like you had to figure out that you know, uh, I guess spoiler alert: if you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, but you had like 17 years, so too bad. <laughs> um, it's like when you find out that you know, it's a little. Uh, let's know that Squall is Laguna's son. Is, is it like, incident? Huh? Is it? I don't think they say it. He never says it, but it's heavily suggested that. And the so, so it's like what's cool about it is because like you had Laguna and the singer who were like wanting to be lovers, but they were torn apart by the war and everything. And then their kids are end up finally getting together, like in the future. I did not see that, but well, it's well, that's a whole like parallel between. Laguna's story and his like life and then Squall's life as well okay. and then everything sort of like it's, it's neat how everything sort of like stacks on top of each other and you have to play it a couple times to pick all that up okay right. but that's that's, uh, that's one of the best examples of um of why analysis can be great is because if you didn't get that while playing the game and then someone analyzes it and tells you then you can have a new appreciation for it possibly you know yeah true um, I, I, I that's kind one of the funnest like the fun thing about analyzing MLP for me is that you know, I've been paying much closer attention probably than a lot of people have, um, and I watch these episodes again and again, and I find all this stuff. So when I talk about it and people are like, man, I never noticed that, and then they go back and watch it, and they're like, now I like it even more. And that's the coolest thing that I get to do is, like, broaden people's idea of what they're seeing, um, not only explaining to them why they might, like, you know, helping them to understand why they like it, but also helping them to find new things to like about it that they might not have noticed before. Oh, okay, um, I kind of get it because one opinion, one one person's opinion is their own. But if somebody enlightens them with um, their own opinion, they get a broader understanding of the whole um, series. Yeah, yeah. If and someone has a consistent opinion, rubric to work on. When someone has a consistent rubric to work on, and you see, like, okay, you're grading it based on. Uh, characters. Then, when it's narrowed like that, I guess then you can see the objectivity. But when it's thrown all wide open, you're trying to grade the show for what it is. Then a lot of disagreements can happen. True. And Elsa, like if you have a bad opinion, and then you learn something, it can help you have a better opinion. True. True. Like, and Elf- uh, you can same can be said for politics. <laughs> no politics, yes, please. And no, Alpha. El- um, yes. I hate Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> well, you're just wrong. I'm sorry. Have you played... Yeah, everyone has their own opinion and you're entitled to yours being wrong, so... True, that may it be, but have you played it? I really hate the junction system and the whole gameplay at the end doesn't really matter who you pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need to talk later. This is not Final Fantasy VIII. Huh. 
So DG, um, how long does it take for you to do one of the of your videos? You, it's almost always, I, I was going to say it depends on the video, but it really only depends on the video if it's like a whole different kind of video. Like uh, if it's, you know, in Q&A or something, obviously it's going to take a lot longer. But um, my videos don't take very long. It's usually... Um, it's usually a concept, like especially with the observations videos, which are like the most popular ones that I do, where it's like a more broad concept. It's usually something I've been thinking about for a long time. And then when I do the episodic videos, I usually sit down, watch the episode, like take notes, and then I'll just turn those notes into a post. The actual writing part takes anywhere between an hour and like two and a half hours maybe, but it's like usually just in one straight shot because I'm... I've been doing, I've been blogging stuff and like analyzing this way for like six years now. So I'm extremely used to writing this way. Um, I'm able to crank out stuff really fast. I've always been known for being able to write blog posts really fast. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's like a, it's extremely ingrained skill of mine that I can do this, um, with a lot of speed. So, you know, I, I write it all at once. I, I do the audio in just one take. So it takes pretty much as long as, it takes about as long to record a video as it did to write, uh, I mean, to, to, to say, like, ugh. It takes as long to record the video as the video is long. So if it's a six-minute video, it means I probably spent about seven minutes recording it because of the lines I had to skip over. Then I just edit out all the breaths, and I throw that into Sony Vegas, and then I just throw a bunch of pictures at it, and throwing a bunch of pictures at it process usually takes anywhere from, uh, I'm going to say two to three, four hours depending on the size of the video um it's funny because a video like if you if you think a video that's six minutes long versus a video that's 10 minutes long um for you it's only a four minute difference but when you're in the editing process that's like two extra hours like every every one minute of footage is at least like half an hour of uh extra work so the like depending on the length of the video it can take um like for a random headcanon video, which are usually two or three minutes, at if that, those can be thrown together in like a cup. Like literally writing. I, I've had videos before where like I started writing it, and then the video was done within like an hour and a half. If it's a if it's a short video, oh, okay. but um, for longer ones, it can take like all day. And it's mostly the reason that my videos don't come out like constantly is that it's mostly about mental energy and like getting the inspiration to actually go and write the post or watch the episode that I'm going to talk about or not end up in 22 podcasts and 500 live streams <laughs> over the course of the week, you know, <laughs> or get distracted by my offline friends who are over at my house like every goddamn day, you know. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that – and, of course, answering all the comments because I get insane un- amounts of comments on my um, – on my videos and I try to read most of them, especially like the first day that a video comes out. I try to read all the comments on the first day, but, uh, yeah. So all of that is basically what prevents me from cranking out videos constantly. But the speed at which I make them is not an indication of how long they, they take to come out. Cause it, it takes longer to come out, um, than it, than it probably should. Okay. So it based on, um, video versus time and effort. Oh, okay. Right. So, um, Alpha, you got a question for DG? Uh, sure. Did you? What do you think about tulpas? <laughs> I don't know, man. I like the concept, but it's not useful to me. True. It's like having a Digimon. <laughs> okay, that explains it. Because, like, there was the whole, um... The, the whole tulpa thing was introduced to me when I was doing those pony hypnosis videos, and... I love the concept of both, both the pony hypnosis and the uh, the tulpa thing. I think, you know, I love the idea that your mind has the power to make you believe interesting things uh, and make them real. And that's cool and all, but for me personally, there's really no use for it. Like, the idea of hypnotizing yourself to be Twilight Sparkle, it's like, well, what, what am I going to do as Twilight Sparkle? Like, how am I going to spend my day walking around as a pony being Twilight Sparkle, it's, 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 I, have, I got I the perfect answer for you. I can't like, you know, <laughs> I could see doing it if uh, if you had like, like to to me the, the hypnosis stuff, and I, I don't mean to like degrade anyone who's doing this because I uh, when I say that like you basically have to kind of have no life or nothing's really making you happy. Like there's nothing you really want to do. Like you're sitting around, you're bored all day. You'd rather be a pony than be yourself. 
that's the perfect kind of mindset to do something like try and become something else because then you'll have more fun and have better way of spending your time. DJ, DJ, um, I got the perfect answer for you. I got the perfect answer for you. Do it when you're cosplaying. Right. Oh, yeah. Do it when you're cosplaying, although that may make it really hard to walk around a convention because you'd be <laughs> on all fours, but, uh... Okay, not I guess if you were, to that extent. <laughs> I guess if you were, like, trying to be Rainbow Dash, you could just say that you're flying and... <laughs> That's Curious right question, have you ever done a cosplay? Um, well, I'm kind of cosplaying Digibrony at uh, BronyCon this year. Yay! Wow. We have that pretty hand. much a wig and a t-shirt with a drawing of my cutie mark on it. But, uh, awesome, awesome. But it is a cosplay. Like, I've never done a, a legit one, mostly because I am too lazy to, <laughs> and unknowledgeable to put together a costume. I really want to cosplay the main character from Garzy's Wing, but... Uh, it would be difficult to put together. If you've never heard of Garzy's Wing, go watch it. It's a three-episode anime that you can easily find on YouTube. Um, watch it dubbed, because that's the only way to watch it. And uh, and just watch it. Have your mind completely blown, because it is the worst thing that's ever been made. Oh, I think I've seen it before. I've heard of it, and somebody reviewed it. Ay ay ay. It's very worth watching. It's, one of, it's actually one of my favorite anime, because it's like... It's it's like transcendental. It's not like a normal bad thing. It's it's not like watching The Wicker Man where it's like really <laughs> really bad but it's mostly boring. It, it's like if you took that video of the best like the, the craziest scenes from The Wicker Man and made that an entire movie. That would be Garzy's Wing. It's nonstop the craziest scenes. Like every scene is the craziest scene. Okay, I'll take your word for it. So, um got a question from one of our listeners, Dom Park. Um, he asked, if you had a cake with a character from the show on it, would you be cruel enough to cut it and eat it? A cake? Yep. Well, I've already had a cake with one of the characters on the show from it. Ooh. Oh, my. Um, my, my 21st birthday cake was, uh, was tw- had Twilight Sparkle. Um, I actually had this image. It's a it's an image that was a parody of um, of Hellboy, <laughs> where Twilight Sparkle is holding up a bottle of rum, and she says... Don't mess with me, Trixie. I've been drinking with skeletons, and I had that as my uh, as my cake. Awesome! Wow! Awesome! Wow! You're so full of awesome. Like asking more questions from the fans would not would do you injustice. <laughs> so, um, moving on to other questions. Besides My Little Pony, are you going to be doing like any sort of analysis of any other shows or animes that you are a fan of, even though none of them are Breaking Bad? <laughs> right. Um. I've been analyzing anime for the past six years, so I have a, I have a that's not a word load of anime analysis. Sorry for saying that's not a word and emphasizing it so much <laughs> that you have to like have an extra long bleep for that. So I've been analyzing anime forever um, on my blog. I've never covered. It's funny because I or the only show I've covered from episode to episode, like like on an episode basis, is FLCL because it's only six episodes long. And I did that in 2009, and then I always am, like, trying to episodically blog a show, but I never finish it. But I, I, I mostly posted about, like, broader concepts and stuff like that um, as an anime fan over the years. Um, pretty much all of my analytical skills developed through that, because I started doing it when I was, like, 15 on my blog. And, uh, and I've developed a lot since then. Uh, you know, met a lot of other people, because there's, there's a pretty dense circuit of people who were doing anime blogging. Uh, most of them are not really around anymore, at least the ones that I was, uh, was friends with aren't really doing it now. But we were all pretty much friends, and we all knew each other, and like some of them were like, you know, they were actually college-educated literary people, whereas I was like just some guy who was like a kid who really liked talking about shows, you know? But uh, I picked up a lot of analytical skills from those guys, and... Uh, became a better writer over the years so if i had been doing this when like two years ago it would not nearly be as interesting as it is now because i've developed my writing skills so much over the course of time yeah so awesome awesome i I kind of yeah get what you uh, i I think i remember hearing your explanation at one of your q a's before yeah i mean if because it's funny because um people often ask me about this like uh why don't you do analysis of anime i'm like you know I know you guys want it in video form, but if you really want to read me analyzing anime, the blog's right over there. <laughs> There's six years of posts on it if you're interested, you know. Like, uh, I, I, I haven't done enough, like, to advertise the fact that I have been around for a long time and have, like, a lot of great posts on this old blog that I'm like, hey, maybe you should go read those because they're pretty awesome, you know. Like, it's funny because at the time that I wrote those, 
they would have been a big deal to me, but no one would have read them because I wasn't like big as an anime blogger. You know, I would have had just like a few, like the, my friends would have read them and told me they were cool and that, that would have been great and all. But like, it's been so long that I feel kind of distanced from my old posts. But if I went back and read them, I'd be like, why am I not advertising these? Like, I've written some great stuff <laughs> over the years. I really need to put this stuff out there. Or oh, the opposite could happen. Publish it in a book. Or oh, the opposite could happen say, oh God, my writing sucks. Yeah, that's the worst thing about reading my old posts is that my writing style has evolved so much, um, especially since 2010, which is when I – like, because I, I was in college, and in 2010, I took a writing – like, it was just, like, English 101, right? So it wasn't even like I learned much in the class, but the professor knew what he was talking about, and, like, the first paper I gave him, uh, he told me, you know – you're a pretty great writer, but the problem is that you you just ramble endlessly. Like you never have any cohesive points. You you have too many unnecessary words and sentences and like tangents and stuff. So you just need to simplify it. Just simplify everything. And once he told me that, I became like really obsessed with simplifying simplifying stuff. So these days, like when I write, I, I like obsessively cut out all unnecessary words, all unnecessary sentences and ideas, you know, until I have like the most boiled down version of whatever I wanted to say. So, uh, to the point that now I can do it without even really thinking about it. Like it took me a while to like decide what was necessary or unnecessary. Nowadays when I write, I, it just comes out in these like densely concentrated bursts. So when I try to reread like really old stuff and I'm just like, Oh my God, I don't care about this. <laughs> That's not a word. I'm saying, you know, like get to the point. <laughs> Did you please? Actually, maybe that was 2011. I, I don't remember. It was one of those years. Um, but yeah, like after, like if I go back beyond a certain point, then my writing is insufferable to me. So oh, okay, understandable. But what I do is I never delete my stuff. I also used to blog quite often, and right. when I go back to read my post from 2007, I'll be like, "Why, Daniel? Why?" Yeah, yeah. I don't delete anything either. But um, I know that like for the the whole first year of my blog is so bad that at one point a few years ago, I went and I put a like a note at the start of every post that says note. This this post is very old and no longer reflective of my views or writing style because a lot of it is like posts about stuff where it'll be about some show that I watched back then and it's like my opinion but I haven't seen that show since then so I know that my opinion would not be the same as it was when I was fifteen you know like it's just not gonna happen so I put that note in there so that if anyone goes through my backlogs of my blog they won't see that and think I still you know still feel that way but. I've been running the same site for seven years, so everything is on there, you know. Okay. Um, and I, I, I tried to do as much of my writing on that. And, and, and other sites that I've created over the years where, like, I had, like, a side project or something, I mostly integrated those back into my main blog. So it's got it's got pretty much everything I've done uh, that was of any worth over the past seven years on it. Awesome, awesome. I actually went the other way around. I start projects on my blog, then I break them away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Digi, you mentioned... Um, View, um, reviewers like that guy with the glasses and the spoony one. So, yeah. do you would you say you're a fan of them or watch them or just um, those specific ones? I don't really because uh, their videos tend to be really long form and like for instance with Spoony, he's got like so many storylines. And- That's not a word in his videos that I can't follow. <laughs> so like I watch one of his newer videos and I'm like I don't really know what's happening, you know, because I I, I can't watch like. 200 hours of all of his other stuff but there are reviewers who i follow obsessively and i'm definitely a big time into like reviewers and analysts um it's funny i always tell people that i spend way more time watching reviews than i do watching the stuff that that is being reviewed because like uh i've recently gotten back into video games uh since last year but i've been keeping up with yahtzee the game reviewer for since 2008 so even though I wasn't playing any of the games he was talking about, I was always watching Yahtzee's videos uh, just because they're hilarious and fun and they had something to analyze in them that I found interesting, you know? So, um, yeah, like a lot of the, the analysts I watch are video game analysts because I just find it fascinating if there's a good one and there's not enough good ones out there. So uh, I watch Extra Credits. Um, there's this guy called, uh, Aaron Signal, or Campster is, like, his YouTube name, and Aaron Signal's the name of his show, and that guy is phenomenal. Um, Sequelitis videos are one of my biggest influences. I am absolutely in love with Eager Raptors Sequelitis videos, uh, which is only, like, three of, but they're fantastic. Um, okay, okay, so... Else? 
Um, who uh, I recently discovered a guy called Mr. B Tongue, and that guy is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I mean, if you go onto my YouTube channel and you go to like the about section, you can see a list of like everything I'm subscribed to. So there's a bunch of analysts in there. Um, you know, I was when I was big in anime blogging, there was a lot of anime bloggers who I would have considered favorites. Uh, no one would have heard like no one outside of anime bloggers will have heard of any of them, but. Uh, like, my favorite was this guy, Ghost Lightning, who I, I'm super good friends with. I actually went to the Philippines and stayed with him for a month uh, a few years ago. So I know that guy extremely well. And he taught me most of what I know about, like, analysis and uh, and literary theory. So Wow, awesome. Yeah. So um, moving on to one of the questions from the listeners, uh, Samuel Okabo. Is that how you say it? Well, if I'm wrong, you'll tell me about it. So, um... He asks, what are your thoughts on EQG movie and what um, what he thinks should have been the first MLP movie? Um, I think we mentioned this before, but right, if you yeah. can... We've basically, we've basically covered everything about Equestria Girls. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'd like to see it. It's not playing in any theaters near me, so I don't really get to see it uh, until it comes out on DVD or something. But I, I'd like to see it. So, now, uh, in your I'm opinion... I'm keeping baby. Like, so, like I don't have high expectations, but I'd like. I, I, hopefully, it'll be pretty cool. You know, so if your, it sucks, then it's no. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so in your opinion, what should be? What should have been the first uh, MLB movie? And I'm directing this question to everyone. You first, DG. Oh, you gonna? I really don't know. Like, I'm not. I'm not good at coming up with ideas like that. <laughs> okay, Alpha. What was that? <laughs> Um, the question is, uh, in your opinion, what should have been the first MLP movie? Uh, an actual MLP movie? Yeah. Uh, something that, like, you know, dealt with the characters or expanded on the mythology. Maybe show, like, the fall of Luna, you know, something like that. Just anything that would have just really expanded on the world. Well, okay. Luna would be very interesting. So, It'd be nice to have some, uh, some MLP movies that are kind of like the Dragon Ball movies. <laughs> Like, uh, not the theater ones, but, like, the made-for-TV ones, like, the history of Trunks and everything, where uh, it's, like, ooh. just, they, they went to some other, like, they just showed Trunks' history, uh, you know, or whatever. And to do some stuff like that with Celestia and Luna and other, like, background characters, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah that, that would be a cool touch. That would be nice. But, Dan, what about you? I actually think Magical Mystery Cure should have been a movie. Hmm. You mean... Because, I mean, as much as Digibony says the pacing was good, I kind of disagree, and I feel that it was uh, quite rushed. And I think if it would have been made into a full-length movie and perhaps a full-length musical in a sense, it would have been much better. Oh, okay, okay. The yeah. Canelot Wedding could have been a movie. Space it out, show more it of the fall of the movie. Equestria. <laughs> well, they, they left out sort of the middle beat where, like, the changelings are ruling. And I think that had been a cool, okay. like, Empire Strikes Back moment. I think doing a 90 minutes have the three beats of the build-up, yeah. the fall, and the return. Okay. I think that would have been a cool movie. I'm kind of going to yeah. cover that. Um, I've, I intend to, have, like, before too long, put out a video about pacing in MLP and just generally talk about stuff like that where I think that something like that episode could have been better uh, with better pacing, but I don't necessarily think it needed more time. I just think it needed to use its time better. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that's true of a lot of MLP episodes. Something like um, Keep Calm and Flutter On, where, like, it just kind of has this like, railroading ending where it's, like, all of a sudden Discord's reformed and stuff. Yeah. And yet, but the first half of the episode wastes a lot of time. There's, like, all this time that the ponies are just, like, standing around talking about nothing really relevant to the plot. What if they had just changed the, you know, like, got rid of that dialogue and given more time for Discord to, like, have this realization about friendship? All it would have taken was, like, 30 seconds to a minute for him to, like, sit there and reflect, you know, and not just immediately ch- ch- change, you know. Like, that's all it would have taken is cut out the part at the beginning where Pinkie Pie and Rarity are talking about nothing and, like, switch it around with, you know, Discord having longer to realize stuff. So I think that a lot of MLP episodes d- don't necessarily need more time. They just need better time management. Crystal Empire definitely is an example of an episode that, like, if they hadn't spent so long talking about Twilight's test and everything in the first, like, five minutes of the first episode, then they probably could have, you know, fit more exposition about whatever into the second half. Okay, okay, that's awesome. Or just put more somber in there. Oh, true, yeah. true. Or to extend, you know, for the sake of being a musical, you know, to fit more songs into it, that actually would have been a better formula to go for a movie. 
Right, mm-hmm. like magical mystery cure. I can, I can get where having more time would be okay. Um, I'm not saying that that it, that that I that I disagree that a two part episode would be cool, but I like what they did anyway with the one part episode. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of um, is you're given this, and it's your opinion to like it or not. So well, doing the, the music episodes. help. Well, I think people complain about the pacing because. Uh, oh, the music helps sort of like steamroll through that. So making it musical, they didn't have to sit in exposition. So yeah, for a musical standpoint, it worked. But if it was all just straight text, it would have been rushed. So it's that weird yeah. like substitution for pacing. Again, it's something that deserves to be looked at like really in depth. And a lot of people have looked at it in depth of their own opinions. But I really want to get into the I want to get into the bones of it with my own video at some point. Um, I'm not fully formulated in my thoughts right now about it, so that's why I don't want to get too into it at the moment. Okay. Cool. The only thing that is there that makes me feel that it should really be a movie that, I mean, really presses for it is that there's a cliffhanger. You yeah, know, that, that, is, that everyone wants to know what happens to Twilight. Right. It's a, it, it sucks that it had to be a finale, and then you have to wait for the, like, because, <laughs> you know, McCarthy immediately said, yeah, it's part one of a three-part episode, really, but the other two parts are the season Four opener. It's like, oh well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. Oh, no, that could be my movie idea coming true. Yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, Digi, let's move on to some random questions. Uh, you said that you've been in, you've been getting back into video games. So what have you been playing? Well, since I started doing MLP analysis, I haven't had a lot of time to play video games because I get like so wrapped. Like this month has been an all-time low for, like, media consumption in general for me. Because I've been so busy in May that I've, I've done, like, nothing but, like, listen to music and and uh, end up in a bunch of live streams and stuff. So, but last month, uh, I was playing the new Tomb Raider, which Ooh. I was really enjoying. Um, I've actually played a lot of, like, current games this year, because ordinarily I wouldn't. I, I mostly, like, last year, all I was playing was, like, old games and indie games. So... Uh, like I got, uh, and I mostly play action RPGs. So I was playing like a lot of old classic action RPGs. Um, this year, I've played, uh, like I said, the new Tomb Raider, which I really enjoyed. I played Bioshock Infinite, which I didn't like at all. Um, and I've got a review okay. about that if people are interested. Whoa, um, Whoa now, okay, <laughs> them in <been> fighting words. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, like, actually, like, because I've got a review of it, and that's fine and all, but there's also one by this, by that guy, Errant Signal, and I think he makes the best case about why he didn't like the game, and, uh, his videos are just phenomenal anyway, so, if you want to learn about that, go search Errant Signal, Bioshock Infinite, um, I agree with pretty much everything in his video, but his reasons for disliking it aren't quite the same as mine, because he cares a lot more about story in games, and I don't give a- That's not a word! ...about story in games, so, (laughs) um... So yeah, uh, so anyway, the, the, uh, there was that. Um, I didn't really care for Bioshock Infinite. I played Dark Siders one just because I was like really, really. I was trying to do this top fifty albums list, and I needed something mindless to play while I listened to music. And so I did. I played Dark Siders one, which is kind of atrocious. Uh, and I played. Uh, I played Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and that was pretty fun, but I need to replay it, because I was so bad at it, like, all the way through. Like, it wasn't until the very last level of the game that I really, like, started to get a handle on what I was doing, and, oh. like, I, I was like, yeah, I need to go back to that game. Oh, trust me. I still call that, um, name Metal, that game Metal Gear Fruit Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, trust um, me, if you do play Metal Gear Rising Revengeance on a higher difficulty, uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be really hard. <laughs> Um, and then I also, this year, finally played uh, Ocarina of Time all the way through, <laughs> and that was excellent. Did you live stream it or record something? Yeah, yeah, I did live stream it. Oh, awesome. I, I have not played Ocarina of Time, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it was funny because I had been playing it on the 3DS version, because uh, that one's, you know, it's graphically superior. They fixed some things, like the Water Temple is less of a pain. Um, there's, like, different stuff that they fixed. And so I've been playing it on the 3DS, and I just, like, didn't enjoy it at all when I was playing it on there. Uh, I got up through, like, the Forest Temple, which is the fourth temple, um, probably, like, a good six hours into the game or so. And I just was, like, not having fun. I was like, I don't get it. This game is not appealing to me at all. And then I realized, I put out a video about specifically why I don't like the 3DS version and did like the N64 one. And it's because it was just too small. 
And <laughs> I don't like the 3DS as a controller. Like, you know, uh, I don't like the way the joystick feels. I don't like the way the buttons feel. I don't like the way the L and R buttons feel. And the screen is really small. And it's supposed to be this sort of big sweeping you know, adventure where it's like you're in Hyrule Field and it's supposed to have this feeling of being really big, even though it's really small. Like Hyrule Field is a tiny, it's a tiny hub world. But when you're looking at it on a big screen, you get the sense of scale that you don't get from the 3DS version where it looks small and you're just rolling across it in like two minutes and you're like, okay, that was like nothing, you know? So, um, okay. yeah, it just feels a lot more opened up when you play it on the N64. And so I did a whole, and uh, there's like a stronger feeling of movement that you can get from using a controller than you can from using the 3DS. So yeah, I've got a video about that up on my game channel, which is called uh, The Hermit Society. Um, you can probably easily find it just by going to my channel and looking on the right side, and there'll be so links to it. this stuff. Hermit Society, is it your channel, or is it a group channel? Um, it's supposed to be a group channel, but it's really just me. Uh, like me, I wanted something for my friends and I. Like If we do stuff together... Because we've wanted to do stuff like borderline let's play sort of videos and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, like uh, like commentary videos and, and things of that nature, we're going to go up on there. But we've never really done any of it. Uh, like we keep setting plans to do it, and then nobody wants to edit the videos, basically. <laughs> so. Oh, understandable. So, um, moving on to a question from the listeners, um, Charlie, one of our co-hosts, he asked, "Digi Bruni, are you a voice actor in any?" form of popular media i did a voice in inanimate insanity inanimate insanity which is a youtube uh flash cartoon um they were the because i i've told people like if you want me to do voices and stuff just approach me because uh, i like doing it like, i en- i enjoy the idea of voice i think i have a lot of voices i can do but um but i've never done it you know at all like it's not something i've ever uh tried my hand at so can we have the a first demo? person to hmm can we have a demo a demo? I mean, I could just like, hello, I'm DigiBrody. This is me doing a commercial voice. Do you like having stuff laying around your house? I'm gonna, <laughs> and then, you know, if I want to do some more dramatic voice, I don't know, I can do like, you know, I have to have like a script to have ideas. I've been trying to do um, gender swapped versions of the main six. So, like, my awesome. favorite is to do like Pinkie Pie, where I'm like a. Bubble don't Mary. you think my gown would be more me with some lollipops? Or, that really works. You know, Applejack going like a, well, there's the biggest bumper crop of apples I ever did see. You know, stuff like that. Just you know, you know what, uh, DG, I, I might have something for you in the future. Uh, I have a friend who works at Legoland Malaysia, and he says he wants to record spiels. And well, since you're interested, why not? Um, if he wants something, I'll just ask you. And who knows, your voice might be heard I, on. I have no Le- idea what spiels are, but. It's basically a script where you say stuff like, and to your left is the tower, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? Your voice might be heard in Legoland Malaysia. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe if he's going to pay, but because <laughs> I don't know about doing <laughs> anything like that for free. Oh, um, okay. I mostly want to take voice projects that are more like, you know, immediately interesting to me, like uh, like doing cartoons on a, <laughs> on the internet. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but because I did a voice in Inanimate Insanity, which again is a Flash show, and they they were like the first people to approach me about possibly doing some kind of voice, and I was just like, I play it in iPad, but it's called MePad, and uh, it's like it, the voice sounds like oh, let me think of a line where it's like, um, actually, oatmeal raisin is the least popular kind of cookie. I would advise that you not choose that in the future. So it sounds like that. Awesome! Awesome. Since I'm kind of slow today because I'm derpy, let's go to the last three questions from the listeners. And this one is from Nick Armeir. He asks, uh, besides analyzing MLP, what else do you do on your free time? Not that I'm implying he has nothing else to do. Uh, well, he should be because I don't have anything else to do. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Like... Like I said, my, my free time pretty much, it comes down, because all I have is free time, for one thing. Um, so, like, I get, dist- uh, like, my friends are over at my house all the time, and we just kind of hang out and don't really do anything. Like, we just, they come over and we just sit around bored uh, together. And then, like, occasionally we go out and, like, get some food or something like that. But we don't do anything really exciting. Um, 
Yeah, uh, I, 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 this month I've kept getting dragged into live streams because, like, other people who do analysis and stuff keep live streaming themselves, and I keep ending up in those, and I'm <laughs> not doing it anymore. Like, I, I've purposely said I'm not going to keep doing this because because uh, it's just taking up too much of my time, um, and I'm not getting any videos made. Uh, so then I like to, you know, play video games, watch shows and stuff. Again, this month has been really slow media-wise, but ordinarily I try to get, like, a lot of stuff like that in, um... If you go, like, on my website, I run a, like, every month I do a media journal where it'll be, like, at the end of May, I'll talk about everything that I I did that month, basically. So, uh, so, yeah, this month is going to be the most boring media (laughs) journal ever unless I, unless I turn it around in the next two weeks and, like, play video games or something nonstop. Because so far (laughs) it's, like, I've got four albums on there and that's it. Just, like, music. And that's all I've done this month. So then it's the MBS show episode one all the way to episode 63. We're doing a Breaking Bad marathon. Analyze that. Why do you want me to watch Breaking Bad so much? (laughs) It's an amazing show. uh, Equestria Ghost trailer 50 times. (laughs) That's it. Yeah... Yeah, probably should mention that because I, I, I keep saying that I'm gonna do like a separate one just for MLP stuff because I watch so much fan created MLP content can, yeah, content that it really deserves its own its own summary. But uh, but I've been lazy about actually doing that. Oh, I understand. So um, here's a question for you. So wow. when you post on EQD, uh, how does the process work for you? I basically select a video that I think people will like, and then I post it. Um, like I have, I have the. I'm allowed to. Like I, I actually put out the posts myself. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Is people keep sending me videos. I decide which ones I think will be popular or people will respond well to them, uh, and I post those ones. Okay. So, uh, are are you starting a team or something like like with Curious Brony and Fury Brony like that, or is it just is it like you pick out of the litter of videos that you receive um i just pick out of whatever videos i get like people everyone's sending me their videos and i post those up i mean those guys i know them so like it's a lot they don't really have to send me their videos because i'm already subscribed to them so i see their videos and if i want to post those then i will um i'm not like no one is guaranteed a post like it's not like i'm gonna post all my friends' videos or something like that um you know brony curious does a lot of videos that i don't post because he'll talk about like some Q and A's and stuff, or his like impression series is kind of not really something that EQD really responds to. There are a lot uh, EQD is a lot better for like big open discussion where it's like you're pointing out some kind of big facet of the show um, more so than like an individual episodes. Or if you're like analyzing a whole character or something, it can be interesting. But because there's so much analysis happening and so much of it is of like the same stuff, that I have to be sort of choosy about who I put up. Like, I want to pick people who are doing, like, really in-depth. Like, the more you're actually saying and the the uh, the more your topic is unique, the more likely I am to post it. So, like, one guy did a video on Fluttershy the other day, and it was, like, 11 minutes long and really in-depth about Fluttershy. So because he had so many ideas about it and they were all so, you know, interesting and positive, then I posted that one up. Um I'm not going to post stuff where people are, like, just ranting angrily because EQD will hate that and the fans will just, like, completely rip it to shreds. If you're going to not like an episode, I'd prefer if it was, like, well-reasoned and, you know, mannered and stuff and not just, like, raging and bile and stuff like that. I'm not going to post stuff where, like I said, I got, like, 20 analyses of the Equestria Girls trailer and e- Equestria Daily already did their own follow-up of it. So it, it's, like... Even though some of those videos are, are pretty good, it would be redundant because we already have a, a follow-up. So there's no reason to keep posting these videos, you know. So, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, talking about Theory Bruni, Kevin Funtime wants to know, how how's Theory Bruni and do you know what happened to him? He's basically been, like, in a roulette almost of being kicked out of houses. And so he was being kicked out of his house and... He came to me about it, and he was just telling me that he was getting kicked out, and I was like, I wanted to do something for him. You know, he, he was he was going to be on the streets with, like, no fun- – like, his phone was barely functional. His computer was barely functional. He didn't know what to do because he has, like, no experience with this whatsoever. Um, so I was trying to advise him and get him through it, but he was just, like, super depressed and, you know, thought he wasn't going to last or something like that. So I told him, you know, I'm going to try to help. And so I just put out a video because I was like – you know, maybe 
we'll we'll reach out and see if anything happens. And then it was like overwhelmingly, su- like so many people said support that now he's like doing fine. You know, he's now staying with someone who offered to pick him up uh, in Delaware and doing fine. He has like enough money that he can sustain himself for a while now. So yeah, he's going to be fine. Uh, and it was definitely one of those moments where. I don't even know how to feel about it because on the one hand, I'm super happy that, you know, that he got, that he was able to help and stuff, but I don't want that to be like a thing where I have to, you know, I don't, I don't want this to be a regular thing from me. I'm not going to keep making videos to help people. Uh, cause I don't know those people, you know, with theory, I knew his situation really well already before, um, before it happened. And I was just like really desperate to help him at the, in that moment when I put out the video, you know, so it was just sort of like, I didn't expect what was going to happen and what was going to come of it. Where in like in within four hours he was like set, you know. Oh, okay. Well, um, homeless is not a good place to be. So, well, let's hope he handles his time well and money well. Yeah, I hope so. I hope he, you know, he if he's got enough like backing now that he'd have to like really screw up to not uh, to not um, <laughs> stabilize okay so um last question from the listeners antonio law he wants to know is it possible to over analyze something be it mlp or other shows um i don't think so i think it's possible to analyze something to an extent that is not interesting to anyone like um if you were to break down stuff in a way like, like it, it's sort of like cons- like you know how a lot of people don't really find a conspiracy theory that interesting because you think there's no way that it could actually be true yeah but um so with something like MLP it's possible to go so out there that it's just not that interesting like uh, cuz i get a lot of people send me their head cannons like constantly and some of them it's like yeah, you know, some of them are interesting. I'm like, yeah, I could see that being the case. And some of them are really out there. And it's not that that's a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with having an idea about the show that's really weird and out there. But if if it's not interesting to me, then I just don't care. You know, like uh, there's a really popular theory that that Star Swirl the Bearded became Discord. And to me, that's just like so out there <laughs> that I just don't find it that entertaining. You know, um, uh, I understand. I think um, that is it. Not- so, sorry, uh, I think that um, listener or commenter or that person that posted that video is posting to the wrong person. Um, he should have posted that video to DJ Calcos. Yeah, oh, he, Calcos, yeah. He, he loves all those stuff. Yeah, because he has tinfoil hat time, which he sold me about. Yeah, and it, that one, the, the whole point is to be as out there as possible with the, uh, which, you know, and some people might find that entertaining. So that's why I think there's no way to overanalyze something if someone finds it interesting you know it's just for me I think personally that is overanalyzing, isn't it? does anyone think that is overanalyzing i mean like i think the funniest one was when i was on they were talking about how top gun predicted <laughs> uh twilight you know uh alicorn twilight and this guy gives this huge crazy dissertation and it's like right. wow that's like reaching like crazy yeah i mean yeah it's reaching but you know if it's interesting to that guy there's nothing wrong with that you know it's just like i said it's it's just basically applicability like one of the reasons that i thought i was never going to be big as an analyst is because the way i live my life is very different from most people so i always thought that if i talked about why i relate to a show no one else will relate to it because people can't relate to me because i'm too out there um so that's something that I consider like a limit to applicability where people won't find my videos interesting if they can't relate to what I'm saying. And I've never tried to make people relate to what I'm saying. It just so happens that they do. And I'm very happy about that. But the more out there your ideas are, the less people will, will, will get where you're coming from. Nothing wrong with that. It just means that you won't be able to appeal to as many people. Okay. I I get what you mean. It's kind of in the eye of the beholder, Right, exactly. Yeah, Whether or not it's over analysis depends on the person who's looking at it and saying this is over analysis, you know. Yeah, or somebody yeah. could just say, "Oh, I agree with you, like totally." Exactly. Sometimes over analysis can be boring, though. It's like I'm uh, like a couple years ago, I found this uh, analysis of Neon Genesis Evangelion, where the right. guy literally analyzed every single scene, like even right. a scene where Shinji's just sitting on a bus. <laughs> that was yeah. enough to incite a paragraph of I mean, what that mind you, meant. I could probably do the same for Evangelion. 
<laughs> I but could probably do that, especially for that scene, because that is actually a pretty meaningful scene. Like, Brony Curious watched the show uh, recently. He'd never seen Evangelion, and he just watched it, and he watched episode four, and he said, that's when I realized that the show was, like, phenomenal. And I was like, see, that's, that's the, that is the make-or-break moment right there. It's episode four when Shinji's just, like, on a bus through the whole episode. If you enjoy that, Evangelion's for you. If you don't, it's not for you. you I know? guess you could say the same for ponies on episode four. If you like it, you're a fan. Yeah. Actually, one of the, you know, those kind of out there things that I predicted was what Daniel Ingram did in A Cancelot Wedding, which was something that people were said to have overanalyzed, which was the deceptive right. cadence and the authentic cadence. Yeah. I knew he was going to play with the cadence. I just didn't know how he was going to do it. And he really, really did. Yeah, that was great. Okay, then. So I guess those are all the questions, unless somebody wants to say something. Alpha? Well, if you want to ask the three classic questions that we always ask, why Digibroni? Why that name? Oh, um, it's because of... The, the thing is that I've been going by the internet handle 21st Century Digital Boy for a long time, uh, which is named after a Bad Religion song. And it's uh, it was originally because I considered myself to be very 21st century, and I spent all my time around digital media, and I considered myself to be a boy, because I wasn't... I was, I was, like, really young, you know, and... Um, Last no yeah early 2012 I decided that I was going to change my name to Digi Bro because the, uh, people had called me that anyway like because they always called me Digi Boy or Digi Bro like if they were you know joking and I felt like I was too old to really be Digi Boy anymore because I had grown up you know and so I was like I don't really want to be boy because it just seemed weird so I called myself Digi Bro and then like. Literally one month after changing my name to Digibro, I got into My Little Pony, and so it was so easy to just add Ni onto the end of my name and became Digibro <laughs> Ni. So my internet handle is really Digibro, and then it's just Digibrony if I'm uh, in a if I'm in a My Little Pony area. Oh, awesome! <laughs> okay, and uh, the second one would be let's talk a little bit about your OC, right? So where did the idea come from, and about that cutie mark? Uh, it was not my idea. It was all the designer. Oh, I just okay. I I just told her I really like Sweetie Belle. I really like uh, the colors purple, pink, white, and gray. And I want an analysis cutie mark. And so she came up with the rest. She did so everything. Is that supposed to be like Trivial Pursuit or something? <laughs> no, it's supposed to be a pie chart, I believe. Oh, okay. Ooh. I had just thought it was a color wheel when I first saw it. <laughs> and she told me it was a pie chart. I thought it was a pie chart at first. So yay. <laughs> So I guess those are the questions, and that was Digibroni. Um, thanks again, Digibroni, for coming on. It was awesome. Yeah, no problem. So, Digi, uh, where can they find you? Well, on YouTube, just type Digibroni, and you'll get my channel. Awesome. And some other stuff that you have, like uh, your gaming channel and your blog? If you go to my channel, you'll see that uh, at the top of the page, there'll be something that says... Uh, if you go to the About page, it'll have like links to everything I do, pretty much. Um, there's a page called Modal Soul Productions that you'll see on there, which is like where I have basically set up a portfolio site. So like everything I've ever done pretty much is on there. So yeah, it, it's, it's really easy to find all my content if you're looking for it. Okay. So just go to Digibroni's YouTube page and look for it there. Awesome. So let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout outs. So my shout out goes to you, Digibroni. Thank you for coming on and being a guest. No problem. And thank you, Alpha, for being on and contributing. I contributed. I was helpful. <laughs> Yay. So, Dan, what about you? Oh, uh, well, basically to everyone here tonight, thank you for joining us. Awesome, awesome. And Alpha, you? Uh, I give a shout-out for my dear wife, Nurse Glitter, who broke her leg, and Aww. she's recovering nicely, so everyone oh. send her love and prayers and everything. Okay. Right. Hope, she get, hope she gets well. And what about you, DG? Shout-outs? Uh... A shout out to everyone. You're all awesome people. <laughs> okay, I'll add that in the show notes. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me, Norman, at the MBS show.com, and Daniel at Daniel at the MBS show.com. You could also reach us on Twitter. The show's account is at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And Alpha, do you have Twitter? Yes, of course I do. I am at Alpha underscore Brony. Okay, cool. So, Digi, what about you? Do you have Twitter? Yes, I have at 2013 Digibro. Oh, 2013 Digibro. That's your online handle, right? That you mentioned yes. before? 
So did you just start tweeting this year? No, I've been tweeting for like five years. <laughs> oh. You change that every year, do you? The Twitter handle? Yes, I change it. Every <laughs> okay. Awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Alpha Brony. And I've been Digi Brony. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Pony on. I look to the sky to find you. No pony to see. Just a cloud of streams into my own subconscious. I wonder how I even got this thought into my head to look for you. Now I see a cloud chaser in my heart Keep the sullen dreams away Let them go for another day I got a message on Skype a few minutes ago from someone, and they're like, hey, are you set for today's show? And I'm like, oh, uh, because I I actually thought I might have had two shows that I'm on today. And I'm like, when is it? And they're like, in 20 minutes. And I'm like, I'm in another show right now. Did I really double book? Really? (laughs) Yeah, apparently I double booked shows, but um, he said he'd push it back to uh, to one. Oh, my. Yeah, but now I'm just like, Jesus Christ, what have I done? How long more do you have to? Look at the time, man. Look at the time. It's a 12-hour difference. So okay. in what show are you going to be on? Uh, I have no idea. It's run by someone named Alejandro Cervantes or Scoot Scootaloo. Oh, Scoot, sure that's Brony it. State. Okay, so I guess I'm going to be on Brony State in, uh, <laughs> in about an hour. Wow. The so uh, did not realize that I had double booked the shows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so three, two, one.